All right, this is kind of a challenging page. They don't give us a lot of practice here. We have six problems to do, and I'm going to actually help you set up three of them. All right, so this should help. We're on page 33. Uh, this is going one step further with division or simplifying than what we've done so far. And um, in the previous lesson, we always took whatever the variable was on the top and subtracted the one on the bottom. But on that page, which was page, I think, 31, all the variables on the top had a bigger exponent than the one on the bottom, okay? Here, we're gonna have some times where the variable on the bottom is larger than the one on the top, okay? So it's a little different. We wanna follow the rule here on page 32 of what to do. So first of all, let's do the easy part. Just take the new numerical coefficients out front and simplify that. So what is 28 over 4? So 28 divided by 4, hopefully you know your multiplication facts well by this time, and you know that that is 7, yay! Now, the rule on page 32 says we're going to look at the two x's, subtract the smaller one, which is 1, from the larger one, so 2 minus 1 is 1, but then I want to keep that on the denominator side, okay? Because that's where I had the two x's. So we put the x down here. Looking at the y, we have a larger y on the top, okay? Do you see y? y to the third. Down here is y to the one, so we subtract 3 minus 1 just like we did back on page 31. So we get y squared on the top. Now let me illustrate this in another way. Again, let me put this paste down. <coughs> If I wrote this all the way out, especially with the x, and then y, y, y over <coughs> x, x, y, let's see what happens here. When we have the same variable on the top and bottom, it's like they cancel out. Anything divided by itself is one. So that one cancels out. And then we could cancel this out. And this becomes 1. y over y is 1. Anything divided by itself is 1. Let's see what we have left. I have two y's, and they're both on the top. So y times y is, ah, y squared. What do I have left on the bottom? I just have an x, because these canceled out. So I have an x on the bottom. Okay? Let's think about the rule here. 96 divided by 48. That one's a fact you might not have memorized, but uh, maybe you can see that this is half of this, okay? So we're going to end up with a numerator up here of 2. Let's draw the magic line here to separate the numerator from the denominator. Let's think about x. So we have 1x on the top, 2 on the bottom. All right, so we're going to subtract the smaller from the larger. So 2 minus 1 is... 1, and that one's going to be on the bottom, okay? And then look what happens with the y. I have two y's on the top, two on the bottom. Remember, when we subtract 2 minus 2 and we get 0, anything to the 0 power is just 1. So it's like taking this whole thing times 1. In other words, at this point, we can just take it out. We can ignore it, okay? Um, so we have one more thing we need to write here in the denominator, and then really, that whole problem's done. Let's look at this last problem here. <clears throat> 6 over 24. Now, if I just had the fraction 6 over 24 and said reduce that, you would look at that and say, oh, that's easy. I know what I'm doing, right? You're dividing top and bottom by 6. You're just trying to reduce it, okay? Maybe you first divide it by 2, and then you divide it by 3. But anyways, you end up with 1 over 4, don't you? Okay, the same thing's gonna happen here. We're gonna draw this line. Now this was a positive divided by a negative. So that means that the entire answer is gonna be negative. We don't worry about should I put the, the negative up here? Should I put the negative here? What we do in algebra is we put it out in front of the whole answer. So if, the, if one's positive, one's negative, doesn't matter which one, okay? If the signs are different, the answer is negative. Now, let's think about what, where, where should these letters go. I have a squared on the top, a to the third on the bottom. So again, the rule is subtract the smaller from the larger, and then keep that letter on the side 
where the larger one was. So three minus two is one. So I'm gonna put the A down here and keep the exponent of one. And I'm gonna let you finish by doing this last one. You do the same thing with X. We have X to the third on the bottom, X squared on the top. So again, subtract the smaller from the larger, keep the answer on the, in this case, the denominator. See how easy? We're done, okay? Don't, uh, don't let the examples confuse you. These problems are not really too bad, okay? Hope you do well on, it looks like checkup coming up.